back here from the Richard Schwartz and Associates Studios. Cody, it's time to talk game of the week, and everybody can see it. The helmet in the center. The Louisville Wildcats, who are 4-0 and on the season, were headed to Louisville Friday night to watch them take on the best quarterback in the state by just about every metric, no matter how you slice it, Kamario Taylor. Louisville comes in 4-0, Knox will be 2-2. and Only two losses of the season, two Starkville and West Point, who Louisville only has one-point wins over both. How can you not be excited? Oh, my gosh. I think every media member that I've talked to will be there this weekend. We will be there. This I mean, we'll weekend. be there this weekend. I mean, uh, obviously, all CBI, uh, they're going to be there. Um, I think some, I think TVA might even be sending some people down. I know all the recruiting guys are going to be in town. I'm excited. Uh, it's just one of those games that it's hard not to get excited for. You get a team that last year easily the best team in Mississippi in, in, in Louisville, and they're been pushed around a little bit this year had some close calls are still undefeated though and what max prep says is number 24 in the state in Knoxville county like you said kamario taylor it, it's it, it is shaping up to be a, a heck of a week <laughs> i or a heck cannot of a friday wait. i cannot wait i mean just listen to kamario's stats on the season 905 passing yards averaging 16 yards of completion which is insane to begin with He's got 326 rushing yards already, and he's got 12 total touchdowns to his credit on the year. And I'm going to be honest with you, the man has little to no help. His little brother's a wide receiver and can go make plays, but he, he's just hurting for some weapons on offense. But when you are the weapon, when you're the weapon X, it I mean, he's still going to carry you to some wins, especially when they get into 3A. Yeah, it'll be – listen, we're excited for this one. I mean – Tanner, you you just talk about the way this kid can move. Oh my gosh, he, dude is six five, listed at least six five, two hundred, and that and he's heavier than two hundred. <laughs> I mean, he moves. He moves. It sounds like I always hear, you know, you ever hear about Julian Edelman talking about what it's like running next to Rob Gronkowski? It sounds like a Clydesdale. But um, but um, but you can hear Kamario Taylor run. He runs that hard, and he, I mean. It's just so crazy to watch someone that size be able to move that fast. Well, this this is a matchup that they had last year as well. Louisville yes. played Knoxville County, all of that stuff. Tanner, do you remember the score of that game? Not off the top of my head. Seven to six. Yeah, it was close. It was close. It was a low-scoring game. Yeah. So, I, I mean, and this Knoxville County team, they, they picked up a total of five losses all season long, three of them were early in the season to Starkville, West Point, like they've done this year. Yeah. Along with Louisville, you lost one to Kemper, Kemper County just by two, and then you lost in that championship game to Winona by a possession. And everybody's thinking that that's going to be the rematch this year is not to be in Winona. I agree. Both of the team's best players are back. Both of them, oddly enough, committed to Mississippi State. That is the case. Isn't There's nothing that wrong crazy? with that. Isn't that crazy? I will say, though, and and just the way things change over a season, teams losing players, getting some players. The two losses Noxaby has picked up this year, same as last year early in the season. The margin of loss is a lot less. Yeah. It was 20 to West Point. They lost by two this year. And I think a lot of that, too, is you got to look at the two teams they're playing. I think this Starkville team this year is worse than last year's, and we know this West Point team is not as good as last year's. Correct, which is why I'm saying the things change. So. I think th I think both can be true. I think that Knoxville can be a little bit better under a little bit older Camario Taylor, and I think that West Point, with a new coaching staff and a lot of fresh faces, can be worse. Starkville, obviously losing the amount of talent that they had, they're not going to be as good. They're still good. Um, they're not going to be as good. Well, Some updates on the Little Egg Bowl this week, which we're not going to be able to go to. Starkville head coach Chris Jones and five or six Starkville players suspended for that game. So keep your eye on the score out for the Little Egg Bowl. If we could be at two places at once, that would be great. That'd be awesome. That'd be great. That'd maybe, be great. Maybe just, I got it, play one at like noon and the other one at night. Can we get a 9 a.m.? What's the Matt Rule's 9 a.m. kickoff thing? And he say, uh, I don't know. We need a 9 a.m. kickoff. Give me a 9 a.m. Friday kickoff. 9 a.m. I'll be there. Okay. I'll be there. Breakfast I'll, I'll at let the, you get that sorted out. Breakfast at the stadium. I'll be there. 
I'm serious. Think about think about how cool it'd be to wake up at 9 a.m. on Saturday morning and be able to watch some football. Oh, so you want it on Saturday, not on Yeah, on yeah, Friday. play one Friday night, one Saturday morning. Oh, okay. Okay, that I can get behind. That's what I'm saying. Makes sense. I don't know if the players would like that. Get another day of rest. But you got to be up real early. You're up no earlier than you have to be for school. Okay, you might be right. I don't know. I just something about Friday night lights is special. It's fun, but all I'm saying, I think it's a good idea. I think I've got a hold of a good one. Either way, like you said, Louisville ranked number one in Mississippi according to Max Preps. Knox will be currently at what twenty four? Twenty four. Twenty four. You said so. We got a top twenty five matchup this week. What are your predictions? To be completely honest, I would kill to see this game go like 70 apiece. Oh, my God. Can we get a shootout, please? Unfortunately, I do not think that is going to be the case. But I still do think this this does have an opportunity to be one of the best games we have been at all season long. Because it's his senior year, I think I'm going to have to go with Noxaby. He has not gotten that <sighs> one big win that they're not supposed to win yet in his senior year. I've got him taking down the Wildcats to give them their first loss in like 20 games. It would be insane. That would be ridiculous. I mean, as of dating back to last season, Louisville, I believe, is on a 19-game win streak. Yeah, I think that that's accurate. 19-game win streak. I just... I, I find it hard to believe... Oh, I, that with the help or the lack thereof that Camario Taylor has, they're going to be able to beat this Louisville squad. For that reason, I'm going Louisville, but I'm going, I think we're getting a low-scoring game. I think this could be a 21 to 20, 28 to 23, 24 type game. Do you know what Louisville's win streak is right now, dating back to the 2022-23 season? Uh, it's in the 20s. 30. 30. Yeah, they that tracks. They picked up their 30th consecutive win last week. That tracks. They're good. That's insane. They're quite good. 30 consecutive games dating back this season, last season, and the year before. So three years. Tyrone Short has got them boys playing. And they Always only, got them boys playing. The only game they lost that year was to Starkville 21-20. Yeah. Fun times. Fun times. Speaking of fun times, we're about out of fun times here today. We're, as we're winding down, we've got our predictions in, and we cannot wait to get on the bus uh, and head to Louisville this Friday. I needed to hurry up. But that's about all the time we've got this week. Thanks for watching or listening or however you're joining us here on the Magnolia Fields podcast.